of course, the world is very much focused on what's happening in China, the eco data, the stimulus, the market is really not responding. Are we missing any opportunities out there in smaller markets? Great question, Sherry. Thanks for having me on the show. Uh, we are, uh, you know, certainly going through uh, um, a more difficult time in Asia than in other parts of the world. And when we look at uh, equity markets, it tends to really be driven by, by earnings. Uh, and uh, earnings revisions uh, for Asia have been really pretty disappointing compared to uh, most developed markets. And uh, what we would uh, advise investors to be doing right now, uh, uh, as you think about uh, you know, how to allocate uh, one's uh, portfolio uh, in an Asian context, uh, you have to look at uh, opportunities that are not all completely synchronized and correlated. Uh, and that's why, uh, from our perspective, some of the smaller Asian markets uh, that uh, often don't get that much attention, uh, be it the Philippines or, or Vietnam, are actually uh, you know, perhaps uh, worth a second look at, at this time. Is also your effort trying to avoid correlation a reason why you're suggesting investors across Asia also keep two-thirds of their equity exposure in the U.S., according to your notes? Yeah, um, we do find that uh, Asian investors in particular systematically uh, uh, you know, uh, have this home market bias uh, where they want to own uh, uh, Asian equities first. And uh, that has been something that uh, hasn't been great for their financial health, uh, especially when we look at the, the 10 or 15 year sharp ratio, uh, which has been uh, far higher for uh, U.S. equities at uh, 0.5 compared to about 0.1 uh, for uh, Asian markets. And uh, we do think that, uh, especially at a time when uh, you know, earnings uh, continue to be uh, very resilient uh, in the U.S. Uh, and where arguably uh, you have uh, tech actually coming out of an earnings recession uh, over the past 18 months. This is uh, a, a time where the U.S. equity market uh, is uh, you know, perhaps uh, almost uh, uh, in something of recovery mode. Uh, even as uh, uh, nominal GDP is dropping. Uh, on the other hand, when we look at uh, uh, markets in Asia, uh, be it China or others, uh, the uh, double-digit earnings growth that we had seen forecast at the beginning of the year uh, is probably more likely to be in the 0 to 5 percent range for this year. David, we've seen some of the popular redirection of flows away from China into markets like India, into Japan, but given how extended certainly some of those popular markets are, are there other opportunities for that, uh, I guess, even within an emerging market, Asia play? Well, there's always opportunities on a bottom-up basis, uh, but uh, you know, when we look at uh, Japan, uh, uh, we understand why <laughs> uh, uh, you know people may feel like it. It is extended, uh, you know, given how uh, it has performed relative to its Asian neighbors. But uh, actually, from a valuation and from an earnings perspective, uh, especially earnings momentum, uh, we're finding uh, quite a lot of opportunities in Japan right now. Uh, and so um, given uh, uh, the uh, uh, abundance of, of earnings uh, growth that you'd expect in a weaker yen environment, uh, uh, plus also the, the added tailwind of uh, corporate uh, reform, uh, that is, I, I think, uh, making uh, Japan perhaps uh, the most attractive opportunity of all uh, in this region.